watching the award-winning GHS-TV, Germantown Community Television, your hometown news and information station. Welcome to another edition of Germantown Community Television's award-winning Access Together series. Informative, educational, and entertaining, our diverse programming lineup offers something unique for every viewer. Whether you want to keep up with the latest community news or learn how changes in the Mid-South and beyond affect us right here at home, these local programs keep the focus on you, the citizens of Germantown. Each show is hosted by a member of the community and produced using the students and facilities of Germantown High School's nationally renowned television station, GHS-TV. These programs are made possible through the combined efforts of the City of Germantown, Shelby County Schools, GHS-TV, and the Germantown Community Television Foundation. If you have any questions, comments, or program ideas, write us at the address on your screen or call 754-4788. You can also email us at ghstv17 at aol.com. For more information about GHS-TV and our programming, visit us on the web at www.ghstv.org. Thanks for watching, and we hope you enjoy the following presentation. Welcome to Chamber Matters. I'm your host, Pat Scroggs, President and CEO of the Germantown Area Chamber of Commerce. During each show, we take an inside look at the business leaders making a difference in our city. The Germantown Area Chamber of Commerce has existed for more than 37 years. Our staff, board of directors, ambassadors, and volunteers are all dedicated to creating a vibrant business environment through interactive partnerships with business, government, and community. Today in our business leader segment, we are going to meet Jane Clark, president of Wolf River Management, LLC. In our difference maker segment, we will meet Kim O'Donnell, community relations director, Apple Grove Alzheimer's and Dementia residents. And in our up next segment, we will discuss with Amy Berenger, clinical director, Baptist Rehabilitation, Germantown, the 22nd annual golf tournament. All of these dedicated volunteer leaders are involved with ongoing activities of the Chamber. Join us as Jane Clark, President of Wolf River Management, LLC. Welcome, Jane. Thank you, Pat, for having me. Well, um, it's delightful to have you on our board the last couple of years, and it's an honor to uh, have you represent uh, as President of Wolf River Management. Um, tell our audience, what is Wolf River Management? Well, we are a company that is property management and development and we have specialized recently in medical properties and we are in Mississippi, Tennessee and I've done a little bit of work in Atlanta also. Well that's interesting. Well what is property management? Well it's really exactly what it says, managing properties. Um, it keeps properties value so if the owners later on decide to sell that we are giving them the best property at the best price that we can. So we manage the life cycles of the property from start to finish. Well, obviously, um, I've known you for a long time, but how did you get into this line of uh, work over the years? Well, I actually went to college to be a phys ed teacher, so I did not go in that avenue mm -hmm. and ended up working with Methodist Hospital in Germantown many years ago and work with the physicians. And one of their needs was needing more space. So I just started finding them space, and as it continued on, the next thing I knew, I was putting them in space, I was building buildings, I was moving them around the city, and it just branched off from there. It's fascinating how our lives uh, evolve over the years, uh, unbeknownst to any thing that we've ever thought of uh, previously. Well, um, I know you've built several buildings in our area. Um, how did you then evolve into the development aspect? Was it just a natural progression? Well, I started working with um, a company out of Chattanooga called Capstone, and they actually were the developers, if you will, and, but they were in Chattanooga. So when they came to the Memphis area and we found out there was a need 
for, in this case, physicians who wanted to own their own buildings or partner to own their own buildings. And so because they were in Chattanooga, I did the work here. So they come in with their business aspects to work through the leasing and the legal documents with the physicians and their groups. And then I take it from the ground up. And I started building the buildings. And after they were up and running and everyone was moved in and happy, then I stayed and did the property management to continue with the value of the properties. So again, for our viewers, tell us a little bit about the difference between property management and the development part of it. To develop is to build. You take it from the ground up and you build it. Not all people remain with the buildings to do property management. Um, I am blessed to have been able to do that because I've built relationships with all our tenants and the doctors, so I continue. It's beneficial because I know every nook and cranny mm -hmm. of those buildings to help them keep mm -hmm. value to it. So it really is a progression, but development goes first if you get to do it from the ground up. Many people do property management and they walk into existing buildings mm -hmm. and help do property management that way. But with development, I got to build them from the ground up, so. Well, certainly I know it, it you have ownership in it and pride in what you've built and then to, to sell it and to manage it uh, properly for the, the tenants, I know is a, is a real plus, um, a real asset for anyone. Well, obviously uh, we know about your medical center on Wolf River, and so what is the connection with that building, uh, um, the medical center? With the medical? Um, the medical center at Wolf River are three two-story buildings on a property that is approximately 12 acres. And we did each one in phases with different tenants, different physician groups who wanted to be there. And they partnered with Capstone out of Chattanooga. And then once we got that situated, we started building the buildings. Well, now it's a wonderful referral base. Mm -hmm. And Wolf River, as you know, is the medical corridor of Germantown, so it's a perfect place to be. Right. Well, on the front end, though, I know the, the first one was Stern, That's cardiovascular. Correct. That's correct. So at that time, you did not know the other two who th That's would right. be in there. So That's right. you had to sell that, build that, get uh, the medical groups to uh, commit to that. That's area. right. That's right. We started mm -hmm. with, um, and we call them Wolf River One and Two, two. and Three because mm -hmm. of how we built them. Mm -hmm. Stern Cardiovascular was the first one that we built, and after that, they also have another location in DeSoto, so we built that one also. Then the next group was in Wolf River Two, and that's Memphis Gastroenterology, mm -hmm. and they came into that building. Mm -hmm. um, in Building Three, we have multi tenants, so we have the medical group, which is internal medicine. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Memphis Orthopedic, which is an mm -hmm. orthopedic group with a physical therapy, and then we have Research, which is Sarah Cannon Research Institute. And each one of those came on separately, mm -hmm. and you just build upon one from the next one. Right. Well, um, how has the economy affected? your business obviously you're still growing and still building but uh, have you seen the direct uh, correlation um, yes I'm I'm happy to say that when you are with buildings that are owned by an owner mm -hmm. that are already filled the economy has not hit that hard however the economy and the state of health care today is what I am realizing is changing and health care is changing hourly and so because we are um, working with physicians, we feel their pain. Right. But uh, hopefully you see an improvement, I assume, over the next several years. Perhaps. Yes. And, and actually, I see an improvement from two years ago to today. Mm -hmm. um, we have more interest than we've ever had in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And we have more uh, physicians working to come on board. So it's good. So the future looks better. Yes, it does. Well, it does. Thank you so much, Jane, for being on our show today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We're going to pause for a short break. When we return, we will visit with Kim O'Donnell with Apple Grove Alzheimer's and Dementia Residents. For more than 20 years, we brought you quality programming. We're your hometown news and information station, Germantown Community Television. Our Access Together series puts you in touch with what's happening in Germantown with programs that both enlighten and entertain. For hometown hosts, a hometown attitude, and a genuine concern for you, our hometown viewers, stay tuned to Channel 17 each week and weekend for a new Access program. Produced in the nation's number one educational TV facility, the award-winning Access Together series. 
Only on the station that puts you first, Germantown Community Television. I'm the greatest hitter in the world! Strike one. I'm the greatest hitter in the world! Strike two. I'm the greatest hitter in the world! Strike three. Wow. I'm the greatest pitcher in the world. Yes! Optimism. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. You're watching the award-winning GHS-TV, Germantown Community Television, your hometown news and information station. Welcome back. I'm pleased to have Kim O'Donnell, Community Relations Director with Apple Grove Alzheimer's and Dementia Residents. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm just delighted over the last several years since Apple Grove was built that y'all have been a member of our chamber. And I know you do, uh, do make a difference in our community. And thank you for being on the show today. But uh, how did Apple Grove um, start? Well, this is the concept of Ed Apple Sr. And Apple Grove was really an outgrowth of a bad memory that Ed had when he was a child to go visit his uh, grandmother at a nursing home. Mm -hmm. He remembers the bad smells and the restraints and the bad food and not wanting to go there and sure. then feeling bad about not going. Mm -hmm. So um, in my opinion, assisted living such as Apple Grove is the outgrowth of the nursing homes of yesteryear. And um, that's kind of wh where it all began. Well, how does Apple Grove um, differ from other assisted livings? And unfortunately, in our day and time, I think a lot of, of uh, our past generations did have negative views of, of various homes. And so now uh, we're very fortunate to have some outstanding ones. But I know Apple Grove is, is, again, very exceptional. So how does it differ? Well, I think foremost, Apple Grove is privately owned. And the owners are on site. So they are on-site managers, which is um, different from just about every other assisted living that I know of. Um, a lot of them are owned and operated out of Oregon or Texas or someplace mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. and uh, Apple Grove is different in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Well is there any case that stands out um, in regards to um, resident care and improvement with yes, Apple Grove? It, quite a few. It's mm -hmm. amazing how people will come into this environment and actually thrive. There's one lady I remember we went to assess that lived for 10 years in an independent living facility in Midtown and was very happy there, but it was time, you know, and when we went to assess her, Pat, we did not think that she was going to be able to move into Apple Grove. Mm -hmm. So we recommended therapy, physical therapy, and uh, she, she got really good therapy and she was able to move in and she has thrived. And that's when um, it's so rewarding to have the family members come to us and say thank you. You gave mm -hmm. us our mom back. Mm -hmm. And she's 93. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, tell us some of the services that Apple Grove uh, does provide. Well, we're assisted living, as you well know, but we also have a seven-day-a-week adult daycare. And what, that makes us a little bit different from other daycares just because of, of the nature of the staff always being in place. Uh, most daycares are, are standalone in their Monday through Friday. Uh, mm -hmm. we're there, we, we always have staff in place. We have an RN on site. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an LPN around the clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, the day program is really um, a a nice um, combination of s several activities. Uh, we do um, hands-on activities, entertainment, we do um, cognitive exercises, we do physical exercises, uh, we do have lots of fun. Uh, we incorporate art therapy, music therapy, and pet therapy. Well, um, that, I mean, that sounds wonderful. And of course, I've seen the facility, and it's just a, a beautiful campus. Um, but I know that Alzheimer's, obviously, is a concern for all of us. I think every family's been touched by that or, or someone that mm -hmm. they know. Um, what other contribution is Apple Grove trying to make towards the cause of that? That's a real good question. We are very involved with the Alzheimer's Association here in Memphis. Mm -hmm. uh, we sponsor a, a team, um, the Walk to End Alzheimer's is what they're calling it for 2011. It used to be the memory walk. But we had, uh, for 2010, we had over uh, 20 participants that were Apple Grove employees and family members. And we did the walk and raised, just our little group alone raised over $2,000 for the cause. But the city, um, citywide raised over 130000 Oh, that's so, wonderful. Yeah. That's, well, that's great. Good. Well, all the research is, is definitely needed. Well, what do you see uh, for the future for Apple Grove? 
Well, immediately, uh, actually, we've just uh, requested uh, through the Tennessee licensure to add nine more beds. So that will put us at 49. So we're excited about that. But uh, for, kind of for the long term, we're looking at um, the possibility of expanding to other cities. Oh, that would be really, really marvelous. Well, what uh, obviously anything that's privately owned, I know they usually have some type of challenges or obstacles, but uh, what were some of the ones that Apple Grove faced when they started? Well, fr from the upstart, Ed likes to tell the story about how the builder wanted to tear down his trees. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> there are these two huge oak trees that are in the courtyard. And Ed told him, no, we're going to... Um, keep the trees and build the building around the trees, mm -hmm. which is uh, contributes to the unique design of it as well. Well, it certainly is, is gorgeous. Well, what type of outreach also does Apple Grove um, offer to families? Because I know the family unit is, is very important. Right, well, we offer um, monthly council sessions that are conducted by Bob Bernstein, who is a geriatric social worker. And then we do uh, quarterly uh, family meetings. Uh, we do quarterly newsletters. Uh, we do regular e-letters, and actually we keep an active, uh, obviously an active website, but we keep an uh, active uh, Facebook page. And uh, families can go there for educational links or just to see what's going on at Apple Grove. Well, we just have a few more minutes, but um, Kim, obviously your, your passion and dedication to, to this, uh, to Apple Grove is evident, but were you in this line of business um, earlier, or is it something well, new? Well, I have not really, I have been in senior care for about the last 12 years. I have been working with seniors, and that really is my passion. And then um, with the Alzheimer's uh, issues, and w that is such a growing concern. And unfortunately, there you know we know it doesn't get any better. Mm -hmm. So uh, I feel very fortunate that I have found Apple Grove. Right. Well, is there any other information? Uh, how can they reach you or uh, to find further information about Apple Grove? Well, they can visit our website at applegroveliving.com. Um, they can um, go to Facebook and just uh, put us in the search bar or then come by for a visit. I'll be glad to show them around. Okay, and when one more question is just uh, tell us some of the other, uh, obviously you have a dining room and uh, some of the other uh, amenities, library. We want to tell us just real briefly well, the, about Well, I'll kind of give you a visual of the campus, uh, and you can do a virtual tour on the website, but we do have a, a beautiful living area uh, that is uh, to the, I guess, the east of our courtyard. And the courtyard is, we're a secured facility. The courtyard is totally enclosed, and uh, we have a theater room as well with a 72 inch flat well, that's screen. That's what I wanted to hear because <laughs> I don't think that that's always customary. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much, Kim, for Thanks, being Pat. on our show today, and wish you and um, Ed Apple and Apple Grove the, the very best for the future. Thanks. We're going to take a break, but be sure to stay with us because when we return, we will discuss the 22nd Annual Golf Tournament with Amy Berenger. Hi, I'm actor Jerry Mathers of Leave it to Beaver. Things have changed a lot since the days of black and white TV, but good values and doing the right thing never go out of style. That's why I'm working with the Partnership for Prescription Assistance to help people get the medicines they need. If you are uninsured and struggling, call our toll-free number or visit our website to see if you qualify. It's a free service, a free phone call, and in many cases, your medicines could be free too. Remember, help could be just a phone call away. the award-winning GHS TV Germantown Community Television your hometown news and information station I'm Pat Scroggs your host and you're watching Chamber Matters the Germantown Area Chamber of Commerce offers many positive programs for its members and the public Amy Berenger is with us now to discuss the upcoming 22nd annual golf tournament welcome Amy 
Okay. And I know you haven't played in it for 22 years, but you've played in it for a number of years. We just I have. won't say how many, but uh, uh, I know you're having fun because you've been chairman of this uh, previously. So, again, thank you very much for, for doing this. And uh, we needed a good golfer um, to chair it, and uh, thank you. And you got me instead. Yeah, no, <laughs> I didn't get you instead. You're, you're the one. Uh, well, tell our viewers uh, about where it's going to be held this year and where and what time, and uh, it'll start. Okay. Um, as you said, this is our 22nd annual AT&T mm -hmm. Germantown Chamber Classic. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're very excited to have AT&T on as our mm -hmm. uh, premier sponsor, title sponsor for this event. It's going to be held at the Colonial Country Club. Uh, we're also very fortunate to have multiple uh, country clubs and golf courses involved with our chamber and uh, Colonial is an active member. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to play the Colonial North Course. It's going to be held on June the 20th, and that's a Monday. And I think it's going to be a really sunny, beautiful, <laughs> knock on Perfect. wood, Monday. Mm -hmm. um, we offer a um, grilled buffet lunch. That's going to start at 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll kick off the tournament at 12.30. Right. Well, tell us what type of format uh, does the, the chamber use for this golf tournament? Well, this is an executive tournament. Um, you do not have to be a professional golfer. In fact, you can't be a professional <laughs> golfer and play in our tournament. Uh, we play a four-man scramble, um, a best ball type event in our tournament. Right. And what do you think makes the uh, Germantown Area Chambers tournament so unique? I think there's a lot of things that make our tournament unique. Uh, everything we do at the Chamber is geared towards promoting our member businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and the golf tournament's really no different uh, than that. Uh, aside from uh, the wonderful lunch, a uh, great day of golf, and, and even some entertainment after the tournament, um, we um, do something very unique. We allow um, our sponsors, our whole sponsors is what we call those, um, our, our members of the chamber that we allow to come out and set up basically a mini expo um, at each hole uh, where they can provide information about their business, maybe some items for the golfers, uh, and just uh, network and interact with each foursome that comes around the course. So we make it a uh, fun, entertaining, yet still business-oriented event. All right. Well, who can actually play in this tournament? Um, our tournament is open for all men and women amateurs. You do not have to be a member of the chamber to play in our tournament. Uh, so it, it's open to everyone. And obviously with any event that the chamber has, we always have to have sponsors. So you want to tell us about uh, the sponsorship uh, availabilities? Right. And like most things with the chamber, <laughs> um, there's really something for everyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, uh, another unique feature about our tournament is we do strive to provide a door prize for every player that's involved in the tournament. We just want it to be a really great day for everyone. So we accept donations of door prizes for um, as little as $25. Um, we have uh, tea sponsors that are typical of most golf tournaments where you get a sign at the hole. Uh, we have the hole sponsors that I mentioned, uh, which is like the mini expo. Uh, and then they escalate from there. We've got a birdie sponsor and an eagle sponsor. Both of those include a certain amount of golf uh, in addition to recognition for your business, for your sponsorship. Uh, we have multiple uh, events, uh, contests during, the, during play, maybe a longest drive or a most accurate, a closest to the hole um, type, type events. Um, and so there's really, there's really something from every, for everyone from, for any level of sponsorship. We, we, we tried to... Uh, we tried to think of ways we could sponsor each blade of grass, quite frankly, and, um, but really there's something for everybody at this tournament. So um, tell our viewers then um, how a business can get involved with us um, well, for this tournament. Yeah, and there's lots of ways. Um, we uh, have our website uh, that people can go to and, and find out more about the tournament or sign up to play. Uh, also, there's contact information for the chamber at that site. Um, and really, if someone wants to be involved, if it's a member business, um, they can actually join the committee uh, and be involved in volunteering and some of the legwork it takes to get the word out and communicate about the tournament, um, uh, help, us, help us get things together for the tournament. They can sponsor. Again, we accept donations and, and anyone who donates or sponsors for this tournament, one thing I can say about the Chamber is we really do make special efforts to get the word out and really recognize you. Uh, for your contributions to our tournament. Um, or they can play, mm -hmm. and this is a great way to uh, entertain clients, um, get to know people. I, I've always said that if you, if you spend four hours with somebody on the golf <laughs> tournament, 
they're no longer a client, they're a friend. Yeah. Um, and um, another thing you can do is you can recognize employees, maybe associates or employees who, who work really hard every day. You can, you can take them out and recognize an employee. Um, or again, it's just a great way to network yourself and your own business with other members of our chamber. Right, absolutely. Well, um, do you know right now some of your top flight prizes uh, that we're going to have? Well, Pat, now if I told Secret. you that, uh, <laughs> I'd probably have to kill you. <laughs> uh, no, um, I, we, uh, we're going to keep that under wraps for now, but yeah. we usually try to give away um, some good golf items. Yeah. Um, we, we generally try to give away, um, a lot of our chamber members are retail or restaurant owners, and, and we generally have some great uh, restaurant packages. Uh, right. Again, I just think right. you'll have to get involved right. to see how great this is going to be. For the last couple years, mm -hmm. um, a, a very unique thing we've, we've added to our tournament is that entertainment on what we call the 19th hole. Mm -hmm. um, typically when you go to a golf tournament, that time after you play when you're tired and you're hot and maybe mm -hmm. you're hungry, uh, the time it takes to tabulate the scores mm -hmm. can sometimes be um, challenging. Right. <laughs> and during our tournament we've got um, some chamber members who are fantastic artists and, and we've had entertainment. Right. Uh, so we've almost had to p kick people out of our tournaments as opposed to try to get them to stay. Right. Well it sounds like fun and uh, I think we've got some really good prizes that are in the work so uh, like you said they'll have to check our website for some of those. Thank you again Amy for doing this and for sharing this and appreciate you being on the show today. Sure. Thank you for being with us today for Chamber Matters. We appreciate the guests on today's show, Jane Clark, Kim O'Donnell, and Amy Berenger. If you want further information regarding membership, please call us or look at our website, www.germantownchamber.com. If you're interested in the air dates of Chamber Matters or any other shows on GHS TV, look in the Germantown News for the programming schedule. Thank you again for joining us and be sure to watch Chamber Matters again next season.